in this. The Witchlight Carnival is so much more than you realize. Welcome to Wizards and Wine, the wild beyond the Witchlight, a Dungeons and Dragons podcast. You guys, we're back with Wizards and Wine. We did it. This is the first session, officially speaking, of uh, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Uh, last week was our session zero, where we, uh, no, sorry, two weeks ago was our session zero, where we got to sit down and uh, meet all of the characters, uh, kind of button things down, finalize some stuff. And uh, then last week was the second episode zero with the uh, other group who's also running through the wild beyond the witch light and there'll be crossovers and all kinds of things. I don't know what I was thinking when I thought it was a good idea, but here we are. <laughs> so uh, today joining us, uh, ladies, just introduce yourselves and uh, give me your character names, please. And it looks like somebody is not connected into foundry and i'm not sure i have apple rain and cypress um, I see lean. yeah i don't see lean i i refreshed i refreshed oh okay that'll do it refreshed okay i just there, wanted there to make go. sure we've had some fun technical stuff getting started today no, so good. i just wanted to make sure that there wasn't something else going my on bad. no no not you believe me all of those issues were of my own making um let's start with uh Super cute, super adorable, and a little bit terrifying apple mooncake. Tell me about apple, Janet. That's me. Uh -huh. So apple mooncake is a uh, herring gone, <clears throat> which is a rabbit folk. Uh, she is super adorable. Think like calico critters or uh, Beatrix Potter style um, little bunny with robes and cloaks and stuff. She has a um, alchemy sort of background and uh, sells and makes wonderful uh, pies and things like that and like lavender salves and um, things for your rashes and stuff like that. Anyway, she has a little booth set up at the entrance the entrance of this place. Yeah, there's like a market um, that kind of travels around. Well, it doesn't really travel around with the witch like carnival, but it kind of yeah. um, tries to figure out where they're going to be next. And then they set up as people are approaching the, the carnival. So there's like a, a small marketplace just outside. Yeah. So that's where that's what, where Apple has set up. Um, she is not to be trifled with. Uh, you might think she's adorable and she is. She's lovely and she's a lovely girl. Uh, or, you know, I am because I am Apple, but um, she <laughs> she will cut you. <laughs> See? Much like potato, a tiny you. little potato. Terrifying. Apple mooncake is um, just a little bit of a mama bear. Like, uh, you know, don't don't mess with my crew. Uh, yeah. And I'm trying to think background. Would you like to know uh, some of her background? Whatever you feel like sharing, really. So she grew up um, with, uh, I don't think I actually figured out what town she grew up in, but she grew up with sort of learning all the alchemy and all of that stuff uh, from her parents. And then she kind of left that town and went to the streets of... A city, I just can't remember, or maybe I didn't figure we're out. We're close which city to water. It was. We're really close to water deep. If you want to drop her into water deep, that would just be easy. Water deep. Yeah, yeah that sounds. Yeah, that okay. sounds probably good. Um, and you know, like sold her wares and stuff like that. So she's just been like bopping around doing stuff, and uh, now it's adventure time for her. Nice. Uh, what did she think yeah. of meeting uh, Mr. Merrick last week? Um, I think she was probably a little bit wary. Sure. As she is when she meets new people. But, and curious. Sorry, his He's name was Madrick, not Merrick. My bad. Okay. Well, <laughs> I clearly didn't catch that either. So. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, yeah, no, all good. She's, she's curious. Love it. Anything yeah. else? Yeah. I can't think of anything else. All right. 
Uh, I am going to jump over to Christine because Cypress is kind of connected to Apple right now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm Christine. I play Cypress the Minotaur. Uh, she was recently hired by Apple to help her move her goods and set up the stall uh, in front of the, the carnival. Um, Cypress is kind of a wanderer right now. She's had a lot of job experience in the past and can't seem to find the right place to to belong right now. Uh, she's kind, a little slow, uh, and mm, I'll say she is a, a fighter's type, so she's more of a vanguard in the front. Sure. Cool. Uh, can you uh, give me a little bit more mic level, if you can? Uh, if you can, if you can. Uh, and while you make that adjustment, we're going to head over to <laughs> Cynthia. Cynthia, tell me about Rain. So Rain Bodish, she is a high half elf, um, a warlock. She ran away to join the circus when she was 13. <laughs> Joined Carnival and didn't look back. Grew up in the Feywild, but, well, okay, she was raised in the Feywild until she was 13, but she grew up on the road with the Carnival. Gotcha. Okay. So you kind of consider the people in the Carnival more like parental figures than, you know. They're my family. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And Aaron, tell me a little bit about your character. I will. Uh, her name is Leem. She's a, a, a satyr rogue. Um, here's my story. Button. She uh, lives in Waterdeep and she used to be uh, a part of like, I'm sorry if you hear sounds, my kitten is going off. She was sleeping all day. Um, she used to be a part of like the Waterdeep underground black market kind of thing, doing shady merchant stuff. Uh, but she gave it up because she's really not that good at it and would often get into more fights than getting good deals and got scammed a lot. So she's kind of a suspicious person now in that she doesn't trust anybody, <laughs> especially with deals. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, or anything like that. But she is super into like adventuring and delving for treasure and stuff. So that's why she was like, uh, yeah. Give me a bunch of treasure. I'll go do something for you. I don't care. Yeah, it was that in the pumpkin muffins, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Together. Yeah. It's a undeniable combination. Irresistible. Um, okay, so when we left off last week, you guys had met Nicholas Midnight at the ticket booth on your way inside um, the Witchlight Carnival. I'm just going to zoom in here for the, the stream so they can see. So this right here is the ticket ticket booth. Um, Nicholas Midnight was an elderly gnome, uh, who, you know, kind of sits inside the ticket booth and he, uh, has bad eyesight and bad hearing as you, uh, learned. He has a spyglass that he uses to watch people approach the carnival. And once they get close enough, he has, uh, one of those ear horn things, uh, to help uh -huh. <laughs> hear better. Um, but uh, you guys made it past him, and you met uh, Rain, sort of. Um, also, uh, I do need to, to retcon just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit uh, because of the other group. So uh, when they got inside the door, uh, Rain, you overheard them uh, talking to each other, and you overheard them um, saying you know, each other's names and, and stuff like that. And you recognized it as names that uh, Eliwick, oh, hang on a second. I've got to find her name. Eliwick. Doop, doop. Eliwick Bramble. Where did you go? Oh, it's in the first. Sorry, I'm so well organized that I don't know where I've put everything. That's not so bad, though. Does anybody That's else do that? That's a problem you want to have, right? Yeah. 
Okay, Ellie Wick Thumblestrom. Um, Cynthia is another name that you know um, of somebody who is inside of the Witchlight Carnival. Okay. Um, so okay. you recognize the names of this uh, group of five who came in just after the group that you're standing with now. Uh, so you went into Nicholas and were, you know, just kind of like had like a little hush hush like psh, 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 kind of conversation. And uh, his eyes, Nicholas, his eyes grew quite big and um, he kind of blinked the surprise away and reached underneath the counter and pulled out this uh, wooden box that had a silver key inlaid into the top of it. And he popped it open and there were five tickets inside uh, for the group immediately following this one. So you handed uh, the tickets over uh, to the group of people who came in just after um, this group of three that you have noticed um, come in. Okay. And now, Rain, I need to make sure that you understand something. What's that? I need to make sure that you understand that you are now taking a bit of a leave. You've been working too long, you have been working too hard, and you need to take a break. Whatever that looks like, it's entirely up to you. And then he kind of leans in a little bit closer to you and he goes, but if I were you, I would keep an eye on those three. They all look like troublemakers. Why would a heron gone and a satyr need to travel with a minotaur if they're not looking for trouble? If you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. It does kind of sound like the beginning of a bad joke. <laughs> it does, right? A minotaur, a heron gone and a satyr walk into a carnival. <laughs> right? All right. Um... So, I don't know, you know, maybe you want to go and make friends or maybe just follow them at a distance. I don't know how you want to handle it, but you are relieved of all of your duties for the next few days. Perhaps getting some information for Mr. Witch and Mr. Light would be a good idea? Yeah, that might be a good idea. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be friend. I'll watch them. I'll observe them for a little bit and then I'll, uh we go befriend them see what they're up to perfect enjoy the time off and don't forget we leave in just a couple of days and we would hate to leave without you you've become a key member of the witch light carnival well the witch light carnival has been my has become my family yes it's important that you are here so do not forget i won't and with that he a hug Perfect. And with that, he, you know, turns his attention back to, you, um, you know, the public approaching the ticket booth and he's got his spy glass back up and he's, you know, pointing out funny things about people who are approaching, you know, oh, Mr. Blue shirt with your fancy walk. I don't know, something like that. And he just kind of goes off on his tirade of both welcoming people to the carnival and uh, making them both comfortable with approaching the ticket booth and like a little bit weirded out exactly the way that you guys were um because he's a i mean he's a kindly old gnome but there's something strange and odd about him and that strangeness and oddness is the part about him that's a little bit off-putting uh so ladies i turn it over to you at this point what do you want to do in the carnival <gasps> Where do you want to go? What do you want to see? Uh, I want to check out the Pixie Kingdom. Okay. <laughs> There's a Pixie Kingdom. There's a Pixie Kingdom. There's a Bubble Pop Teapot ride. There's a Calliope. There's a Lost Property. There's Dragonfly rides. There's a shoot one of those of targets. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, I should mention this. Um, guys, write down um, like eight marks on a piece of paper or something um each ticket that you get is good for eight punches so you can go on like eight different rides not all of them cost a, a punch in your ticket but the majority of them do um as well as all of the like game booths uh that you're gonna come across as well well hold on we have eight tickets yeah just uh just a note and you said i you gave the five boxes. special tickets to this other crew yeah that's right yeah you five. handed them over yeah 
first thing Cypress does is like neatly folds the ticket and like stuffs it in a secure pocket. Amazing. I've got little check marks on my paper. Okay, perfect. I'm all ready. All right. Where are you headed? <laughs> well, uh, I'd like to go to Pixie Kingdom, but okay. I'm easy if somebody else, if we want to go as a group somewhere else. I'm good for wherever. The Pixie Kingdom is down here. We just got to keep Dragon our eyes open fly for that. Rides. That sounds Portal. like fun. Feasting Orchard? Oh, that yeah. also sounds like fun. Oh, yeah. With Gondola the... swans. Yep. Snail racing. Yep. We Wait. could just do the old hug the wall tactic. And yeah. then just hug come across stuff. But we should go towards uh, the Pixie Kingdom. Where, oh, where Pixie are Kingdom we right now? We're at the ticket booth. You guys are right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here at the ticket booth. So yeah. like, you're right. Pixie Kingdom is so close. We should go there. Yeah. All right. You guys want to head to the... Okay. Make your way over. And... I can't. Okay. Yeah, I can. I'm, I can. Everybody with I'm me. I'm freed. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I took everybody with. Oh no, sorry. I'm taking people with me. <laughs> hey, that's what I do. <laughs> right. Uh, What's happening? Oh, I couldn't move. I tried to to uh, zoom out on the the image, on the, on the screen. Right. And I was rotating <laughs> myself. Okay, what? there I went to zoom it across. Yeah. Um, sorry, I moved you. What was that? <laughs> I just saw like the whole party go off the map. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been me. Oh, that's could so have funny. been me. I didn't do any. It was not me this time. All right, I'm just gonna like. Was put, I? I'm just gonna put you guys down here, right by the door. No particular reason why. I just. Where does the fourth character go? <laughs> Wait, is there a She's booth the called snail Outstare racing. the Cyclops? Yes. Oh, <gasps> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to do that too. Oh my god, I want to do all of it. Good, because I, I will say that the more you do in the carnival, the more information you're going to get, obviously. I mean, first chapter, but. So I watch them go around one side, and I'm coming around the other side to. Oh, okay. I oh, got it. So yeah, you're, you're like, us. covertly following them? Okay, cool. Yeah, just to, I'm just observing them right now to see what, to get a feel for them. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. You so, don't trust a bunny? <laughs> I was going to say, what's my intelligence? Will I notice this? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anybody have good passive perception? Um, let me see. I don't actually know. Oh, Lord, no. Right? I, no, I, I was just going to say, I feel like this is the first character it. that Aaron has built in ages that doesn't have high passive yes. perception. And I love wisdom. I love oh, wisdom. Right. It's my favorite stat. And now we're finally in a campaign where I can make use of it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm going to get jumped on a bunch. Oh, stuff. man. <laughs> All right. So. You're going to have spiders dropping from the ceiling onto me. Pixie I'm going to notice. Ew, gross. Right. Why do you say that? I don't know. It's like the worst thing that could happen. Yeah, I'd like get a picture right now. I'm going to check the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys walk into the Pixie Kingdom, and uh, there's somebody right there at the door who will uh, take a whole punch uh, from each of your tickets, so you guys can all mark one off. And okay. uh, the Pixie Kingdom is a tranquil mm -hmm. oasis in comparison to the bustling carnival. The air is filled with the aroma of sweet blackberry wine and flower blossoms. Eight fairy yeah. door. Eight fairy doors are all brightly painted and nestled in the bark at the base of the surrounding trees. All of the oak trees shelter a miniaturized fairground. At its heart, a hamster ride inside a tiny Ferris wheel encircled by mini wagons and candy stalls. A pixie sits so cross-legged so in the hollow of a tree at the entrance to this realm. As you guys walk in... He uncrosses his legs and he says, "Why, well, hello and welcome to the Pixie Kingdom." That's so cute. Mm. <laughs> my name is Jeremy Plum, and my job is to make sure you have the best time ever. Sweet. How big is he? 
tiny. Yeah, he's like tiny. Yeah, littlest oh, guy. Like if yeah, you if you were funny. if you were also a pixie, his high little voice would be quite deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, he proudly proclaims to you all you know maybe I'm biased but I happen to think that the pixie kingdom is the best attraction in all of the witch like carnival that's why we chose it first I would like to encourage you all to pick a pixie name Actually, what's the difference? What's a pixie name? A pixie name is a better name than human names. That's for sure. None of us. You have a human. list to pick. I don't know a pixie name. I don't know any pixie names. Okay. Uh, everybody, roll a d8 for me. I want to be called. Uh, I want to be called Junk Belina. <laughs> uh, right. Hold on, d8. Okay, so Christine, while you are in the Pixie Kingdom, Cypress's name is Cobweb. Great. Cobweb. Okay. Cobweb. Great. Yep. Um, apple Mooncake. Oh, it looks like. Uh, okay. Aaron. I wish I got five, Cobweb. One, two, three, four, five. Your name while you're in the Pixie Kingdom will be Jellybean Starfish. Okay. Oh, I love it. Okay. Call me jelly. Okay. I'm giggling watching this. Like, uh, of course, because you know I'm Jeremy. The ring toss. Yeah, you know Jeremy Plum when he's not working the Pixie Kingdom, quote unquote, working the Pixie Kingdom. He's a bit of a lush. So this like super cutesy act always just kills you. You find it hysterical. Yeah. I'm going to roll a D to see you can give me a name that he would call me. Yes. As a regular thing. Absolutely. Seven? Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm still getting used to your original character names, and I'm already giving you different names. Okay. Um, <laughs> and Apple Mooncake, you got a six, right? Uh, I don't know. I rolled, and it's not showing up here. Yeah, I think... Uh, it looks like you rolled under another character. Yeah, I think yeah. you had... Yeah, so just click on moon uh, your token, and then roll. Yep. Oh, weird. Perfect. Why am I showing up as lame? As lame? As lame? I don't know. Lame, huh? <laughs> She's not assigned to a character in the um, players list. Ah, uh, maybe that's it. Okay, no problem. I will sort that out later. Um, but Jeremy looks at you. Jeremy looks at you, uh, Apple, and he says, Your name while you're in the Pixie Kingdom shall be Toad Hop. Because you're a bunny. Toad Hop? Toad oh, Hop. Because okay. you're a bunny. Get it? I I'm sure like, do. I'm like doubled over laughing. Mm-hmm. And uh, the 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 name that Jeremy affectionately gave you uh, not long after you arrived at the carnival, uh, I'm so sorry, is Puddle Mud. <laughs> <laughs> you must have caught him at a bad moment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. And Toad Hop is. What's his name? Jeremy. What? Jeremy Plum. Plum. Plum? Yeah. Jeremy isn't a very pixie name. <laughs> it really isn't. I thought it was a little strange as well, but here we are. Um, he says, <clears throat> Cobweb, why don't you come a little bit closer? Come here. Let me get a good look at you. Okay. He <laughs> step forward. Away. He reaches into his pocket and he pulls out um, a powder. And he throws the powder onto you. And, like, way more of the powder comes out of his little fist than should be reasonable. And uh, he also, after he does that, he hands you uh, a little tiny potion. And he says, to get the true enjoyment out of the pixie kingdom, you gotta be a pixie. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. 
okay. right. It's safer than breaking things. So I drink it. Okay. As I look at the little tiny thing. Yes. And uh, the gorgon. you are now a tiny creature. So you're just a little tiny minotaur. <laughs> Don't step on the minotaur. Oh, tiny yep. little minotaur. So cute. <laughs> Jeremy looks at Liam and goes, Jelly Bean Starfish, it's your turn. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. So he I'm into that. Does the same thing, reaches into his pocket, pulls out the pixie dust and kind of throws it at you and then hands you a little potion and says, Gotta do as the Romans do when in Rome. Am I right? Why is it why do is it a two step process? Why wouldn't it be a two step process? I don't know, I'm just wondering. I'll drink it. I'll drink that potion. <laughs> Glitter so we sparkle like pixies. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right. You're 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 on the ball. I I couldn't think of that. And Toad Hop, like, it's your turn. And it goes hey. goes through the the same kind of thing <clears throat> and you you get the Pixie dust thrown at you. You get handed a little uh, potion. Will you drink the potion? Um, can I hold it and like kind of lick the lick the potion to see if it's safe? Because oh. I, you know, as an alchemist, I can tell if it's poison or not, can't I? Yeah, you would be able to. And you, I mean, it's it looks exactly the same as the two vials that uh, have already shrunk Cypress and Leem down to pixie size. Okay. Sorry, so. and I ask uh, Sir Jeremy, whatever his name is, we, we will be turned back to our normal size, right? The tiny effect will only last for one hour. So if you okay. see a ride right. in here, you got to make sure you get on it quick because an hour is going to go by pretty fast. Okay. I walk up. Yeah, and he, he kind of takes a look at you and goes, Mud. <laughs> Kumquat. <laughs> Plum. That's my nickname for him. Oh, Kumquat, Kumquat is your nickname? Okay, no problem. Okay. And yeah. he goes, I suppose you're... What? Do you want to come in and play with the pixies? I don't know. Oh, no, I don't know. What, what's, what's going on here? So you're shrinking them for an hour. At this size, it's going to take them an hour to get over to the rides. <laughs> No, it doesn't. Everything is super tiny in here, and it all works. Uh-huh. I'm just going to well, keep an eye on them. Do you, do you need a potion? Fine. Right. So he, like, in the most unceremoniously way possible. <laughs> and, like, you are, like, endeared to the pixies in the pixie kingdom. So Jeremy's like dismissive attitude towards you is not um, because he doesn't like you or doesn't enjoy you. It's just like he's he's trying to work right now <laughs> and he's trying to hustle these people to get into this little part of the carnival. And you're just like, you work there. So he's like, what are you even doing? Why are you, in, why are you all up in my business? You know? Anyway, so he takes out the little bit of pixie dust and he kind of biffs it at you and and he kind of tosses you a, a little potion. <laughs> I, I, read, I grab it in midair. There you go, mud. Thanks, Kumquat. I know how you're Kumquat a sucker for that. I, I know how you're a sucker for that blackberry wine. You've got to remember, a thimble full goes a long way. It certainly does. And you guys are off into you. Uh, the Pixie Kingdom. So 12 Pixies reside here in the Pixie Kingdom. Is that their little um, car caravan? Yes. There? Yeah, their little wagons there in the circle. Yeah. Cute. Like stupidly cute, right? I can't handle it. Oh, I'm taking everybody with me. We're all going uh -oh. in, guys. Oh. That works. <laughs> that works. Yeah. Um... Sweet. They have a Ferris wheel. Mm -hmm. um, there is, is there a Ferris wheel anywhere else? Hold up. No, we got to take this Ferris wheel. Ferris wheels are scary. They always make me, <laughs> when I was on them as a kid, it would make me want to scream, but I couldn't. 
Isn't that weird? You were just that weird. terrified of the Ferris wheel that you couldn't even scream. Couldn't scream, scream yeah. <laughs> wow. Is this bringing back trauma for you? I was going to no. say, I didn't realize that the witch like carnival no. was going to give you emotional damage. <laughs> no, I want to go and it'll conquer my fears. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That that's funny. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just give me a second. Nope, that's not the one. See, I'm I organized myself too well and I don't know what I've done with everything. Um So they're all tiny now, right? Yes. Are they still like the same size compared? So yeah. So like you larger than all the others. Exactly. Yeah. So like you <laughs> you shrunk, but they shrunk more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I just imagine like she was all happy to be smaller, and then all of a sudden everyone else is smaller than her again. Right. Yeah. Um. Let me see if I happen to have. I don't think I do. I was just looking to see if I had a handout that showed a little bit more of the. Uh... Um... Pixie Kingdom. Yeah, mm -hmm. if there was like a picture or anything like that. Um, yep, we did that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so tickets. Okay. Sorry, I'm just missing a piece of information and I'm trying to find out what I've done with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Funny. Um. Bum bum. Okay, so we have that. That is done. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so inside here, um, there are a couple of different things that you can check out. Uh, one of them is uh, a ride um, that they have simply called a pine cone. But underneath the sign that says pine cone is a very excitable pug. So that's what? A, a pug. Yes, like a dog, a pug. Like a real pug. Like a pug, yeah. Um. Yeah. At the centerpiece of the Pixie Kingdom um, is a Pixie Palace that's made entirely of old cocoon husks, and they're all like beautifully and intricately woven together. Um, there's a stand that is selling uh, cuca melon sandwiches and thimbleberry oh. tarts. Um, I want those. There's also the wheel, uh, as you saw there, uh, which is powered by a hamster named Biscuit. Come on now. Yeah. So what would you like to do inside of the Pixie Kingdom? I want to see the pug. Okay. I don't think you can pet that dog. Why? Because I think it's going to talk to us. That's okay. You don't want to talk to the pug? No, I don't know about petting him. Is that rude? <laughs> what if someone Where, petted he you? Much, You're a cute probably bunny. much bigger. Yeah, well... Yeah, it's happened. I, they, I don't take kindly to it. <laughs> well, there you go. It's happened and I don't take kindly try to it. Try it. Me? No, you try it. You pet the dog. No, I meant try to pat me, see what happens. So oh, I take out my, like, club. <laughs> I'll fight you right now. All right, so you guys you guys know the character um, in Mulan, the little dog that she calls little brother? Yeah. Yes. You remember that? Oh, that's yes. That's how mm -hmm. excitable this pug is. Like, he is just, he is all tongue and drool and not real smart. Like, yeah, just not real smart. How much, how much bigger is he than us? Because we've shrunk now, right? Yeah, he's quite a bit bigger. Like, you guys would come oh. up to, like, his pug elbow. Pug elbow. Oh, my God. So we have to be careful he doesn't try to, like, bite us or something. Uh, he, well, or at least step on you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or slobber on us. Or slobber, yeah. Hmm. 
Um, yeah. It's, okay. So what do we do with him if we're there? Uh, you can just go for a ride. Like, you know, the same way that uh, when you're a oh. kid, they have like, you can ride a pony and it, go, and it kind of goes oh. around in that circle. You ride the dog. I'm in. I'm yeah. so in. Yeah. So, oh my God. So as you uh, approach the ride, uh, two fairies, uh, sorry, pixies, let me get it right. Uh, two pixies uh, kind of jump out out of the chairs that they were sitting on and they start kind of straightening things out all over Pinecone and making sure like the saddle is on right so you can get on there and not, you know, feel safe and all of that kind of stuff. And meanwhile, Pinecone is like losing his mind and only one of the pixies seems to be able to like calm him down a little bit it seems to be one pixie uh that pinecone really listens to okay so do we feel safe going on this dog of course you do i mean you're at the carnival okay. nothing ever wrong happens at the carnival yeah i was gonna say don't you trust this as much as you trust the carnival that they set up in dartmouth yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. At least as much yeah, as that one. Definitely. <laughs> like carnies. All right. Well, the, the, yeah, it's the, it's the carnival. Dog is technically a carny. Yeah, it's always Perfect. the carnival that brings the flying ants to the city. I don't know why the two always seem to coincide, but they always do. It's so weird. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um okay, so you're gonna you're gonna go and you're gonna jump mm -hmm. on Pinecone? Does he have like a saddle? Do we go one at a time or? Yeah. So it's, on it's only one at a time. Um, yeah. and, uh, a pixie kind of has him. Uh, so, you know, uh, the halty call, um, like dog walking apparatuses, they go around yeah. his, their muzzle and it yeah. connects behind their ears. Um, it has yeah. something kind of like that, like a pixie version of that on him. And, uh, the one pixie that he always listens to has a hold of like a, a string, and um, with the halty on and, you know, everything connected, he seems to be a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more stable than he was a, a few minutes ago where he was like jumping around and being all crazy like pugs do. All right. I'm in. Let's go. All right. Let's do this. Uh, give me. You're waiting for. Uh, give me. I don't know. This, you know I, don't, I don't really want a animal handling. Do I want animal handling? Yeah. Give me animal handling. Great. I have like none. It's okay. Uh, I turn in rodeo bronco right now. Hey, a uh, five. <laughs> you are holding on for dear life. You dramatically underestimated oh. how high up you would feel on the back of this pug. And it's not that the pug is misbehaving or, or anything like that, but every once in a while he kind of like goes a little bit faster than a canter for a few steps and it kind of like puts you right back in the saddle and you've got to kind of like rearrange yourself and get a better grip on the the horn of the saddle so you don't go flying backwards again um and uh other than that it's a pretty enjoyable experience i mean you can see lots you're getting a really good look at the uh pixie kingdom centerpiece that palace um that is made out of the uh old cocoon um shells and, and stuff like that um, everything in this specific area of the Pixie Kingdom looks absolutely lovely from this vantage point. And uh, you're just kind of taking in all of this beauty and everything that is sparkling and glittering and everything like that uh, as the pug comes around the final turn and uh, stops in front of like these little steps that will help you get down off of the pug. Right. Delightful. Anybody else? Come on, guys. Like this is great. Keep an eye on these guys. I don't really want to ride the dog. What was the other critter that was here? Uh, there is a hamster. The hamster is actually inside of the Ferris wheel, making the Ferris wheel go around. Oh. Wasn't there... What was the end of the list of stuff that you were describing? Uh, um... They had the cakes and... Or the sandwiches and the tarts. Yeah. And something else. Yes. Uh, so pine cone is uh, the pug. Uh, the pixie palace is the kind of in the center of the the whole uh, pixie area. Um, you mm -hmm. can dine on cucumelon uh, sandwiches and thimbleberry tarts. And uh, the hamster named Biscuit is the last one that I was. Hamster talking about. named Biscuit. Uh, yep. I don't really. He runs the Ferris. 
Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I'll go to the Ferris wheel. I'm gonna go to the Ferris wheel. Enjoy your dog ride. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy your dog ride. <laughs> All right. Good boy, pine cone. Any okay? Good boy, pine cone. I love it. Um, Apple, are you going to stay with Cypress or are you gonna head over with Leem? Um. You I want to go, go. Who's sorry? Who's going to the the hamster thingy? I want to go to that. Liam is going, so Aaron's character. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna go I'll, with you. I can wait until you're done your dog ride. No, it's I'm okay. done my dog like, ride. I'd... Oh, you're done. All right, well, let's go. <laughs> Okay, so you guys are going to head over to the carnival. Uh, uh, Cyprus, give me your animal handling check to see how you make out with the pug. I don't want you to miss out on the Ferris wheel in case you want to go over there, too. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Beautiful. You have, like, the best time on the back of this mm -hmm. thing. Um, if anything, it makes you believe that you could have um, – oh, gosh, I'm trying to think of a really huge – animal um, <laughs> yeah a mount. It, yeah exactly like something larger than a mount. war horse yeah buffalo. somebody yeah a big <laughs> buffalo or something buffalo. <laughs> woolly a mammoth moose. yeah mammoth. Ooh, a moose that would be fun um legs are too long it would never work <laughs> do you know how graceful those things are and they dive like in deep with water a minotaur on it They're <laughs> that. <laughs> it would be incredible that is crazy to think about though. yeah absolutely okay <laughs> Uh, so your she's, ride. She's got all these visions in her head now of being a mounted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah, fighter. like you are convinced that you are the absolute greatest. What you missed out on though was that the pixie who had a hold of uh, Pinecone's string as he was taking you around that circle um, was that uh, he was holding like a little piece of uh, like jerky in front of the dog to make it behave <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> yep. So, but yeah, you have. <laughs> Yeah, you absolutely have images of grandeur and this in incredible steed once you get back up to, uh, you know, your, your proper height. Multi-class cavalier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you guys all head over to the Ferris wheel? Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, Shake it in my hooves. Oh, you really shouldn't be. So you get over to the Ferris wheel, and uh, again, there's a little pixie, you know, standing at the bottom, stopping the ride and starting the ride and letting people on and off and all of that stuff. And uh, there is enough room uh, for four people in one of these buckets. So, Rain, if you want to strategically maneuver yourself so you can end up in the same bucket with the other three. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, yeah, we can kind of make that happen. Um so everybody gets into the same uh, spot on the Ferris wheel, and it starts to turn. It's gripping. My hands are gripping my knees. No. And I'm just like, yeah, this is great. Can I give really? you like a lavender, like I have probably like a lavender tincture? We're going like to go coffee? up all the way, and then we're going to come back down. It's totally fine. I look over. It's not that far down. It's not. I could probably jump this high. Huh? <laughs> I don't think I could. Yeah. All of a sudden, you. This hear... is fun. I'm having a great time. Suddenly... I turn to uh, Rain. I go, "Hello, I'm Cypress." No, wait, Cobweb. <laughs> cobweb. Jellybean and what's the name of? Todd oh, Hop. Toad Hop. is already a pixie name. Yeah. Toad yeah, Hop. Kinda. Toad. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. I introduce myself as I'm Rain Bodish. Oh. Um, whatever he called me, Mud Puddle. Puddle Mud. Puddle, puddle Mud. Blood, yeah. Puddle. Puddle Mud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Puddle mud, which seems so much more insulting than a than mud puddle, doesn't it? Like puddle mud. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> right. <Puddle mud. laughs> yeah. Well, I do call him kumquat. So goodness gracious. Okay. Is a, which is a sour little fruit. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right. So uh, they really are like little and they're sour. Yeah, kumquats. Yeah, you got to be ready for it if you're gonna take a bite out of one of those. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, you guys are just kind of chit-chatting, and uh, you are now... I, I mean, I don't know. How are you guys feeling about uh, rain, sorry, puddle mud, um, ending up in the 
in the car with you guys on the Ferris wheel. Are you open to a stranger and meeting someone new? Or are you not? What What's going on? What are the I feelings there? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I'm fine I'm used with that. To, like, I'm used to talking to people in public, like, in my little stall. So I'm kind of, like, you know, kind of interested. And Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Haragon. My name is Apple Mooncake. Nice to meet you. Nice I'm, to meet you too. I'm a half elf. I got like the slightly pointed ears. And my hair is like, you can see the base is like silver. But I've got like three other random colors in it. Like just three random colors. I, I have. But my eyes are two different colors. Okay. One is amber. The other one is green. And where do you hail from? Originally, Feywild, but I've grown up with the carnival. Yeah, I'm from the Feywild too, but I, I lived in Waterdeep for quite a while. Yeah, I... I... <laughs> I've been with the carnival since I was 13. Wow. So eight years. Have my Carnival's mouth open to scream, but there is no scream coming out. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. I push the tincture up closer to your nose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. Uh, so as you guys are, you, you're kind of coming down the back side of the Ferris wheel. And as you come down to the bottom and you're coming past uh, Biscuit, the hamster, um, you hear a, a voice and it says, have you guys met Candlefoot yet? Candlefoot? Candlefoot. Did you meet no. Candlefoot? You haven't met Candlefoot yet? Wait till no. You, no. Who's talking? Wait, 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 no. till, wait till you meet Candlefoot. He's a mime. Cool. Oh no, not into mimes. Yeah, nope, no, I'm out. Nope. He's a mime, and you know what happened? Him, him, and him and Palasha. Palasha, she's the mermaid. Him and Palasha, they're in love. And you know what, what happened? Do you want to know what happened? Do you want to know what happened? Yes. What? Candlefoot was gonna propose, and then he lost his voice, and he didn't get to propose. Mm. What? I know. Everybody's talking about it. Who's talking? Yeah. Who are you? Good. Show yourself. I look at the hamster. The hamster looks right back at Cypress and is like, what? Why is everybody always so surprised that a hamster can talk? Oh, so cute. A little bit is it gossiping hamster? I love this. <laughs> Me too. Like, Where the... can I find the mermaid? And does the guy get his voice back? Well, I mean, we're not really sure what happened, but you know what my money is on? Do you want to know? Yeah. I mean, it's, Tell be us. it's between us, right? Like, I mean, I, I, yes, hate, yeah. I hate to gossip. I, hate I don't. Don't you love it? I spill the beans. I hate to gossip. Biscuits. But there's a troublemaker who comes to the carnival. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a Ken, Kenku, Kenku, Kenku. Yeah, Kenku. Troublemaker. And you know what I think? I think she uses disguises so she can wander around the carnival and just cause trouble. Oh. I think she uses magic to do it. Why? Well. And I think, I think, I'm the only one who's put it together, but I think that this Kenku had something to do with Candlefoot. That's what I think. Did you guys meet Burly yet? All right. Did you guys meet Burly no. yet? Did you meet Burly yet? <laughs> Burly's really fun. You guys are going to really like I mean, Burly. Do with all this information, my goodness. Well, you yeah, know. If, if we ever need anything answered, we'll just come here. Yeah, I mean. You see Rain. Right? Mm -hmm. She's sitting there, one arm like across her abdomen, the other one holding her head like, oh my god. Just face palm. Ugh. <laughs> Right. Okay, so uh, just to give you an idea, this hamster has an intelligence of 10. <laughs> it's an awakened hamster. 
Um, so an I, awakened hamster. An awakened hamster. Yeah. Smarter than Cyprus. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Did you guys meet? Did you meet? Did you meet Burley yet? Oh, hi, Rain. I didn't even see you in there. Hi, Rain. Hi, Rain. It's me. It's me, Biscuit. It's me, Biscuit the hi, hamster. Biscuit. Hi. Hi, Biscuit, and I'm waving down at Hi. Him. I'm really, really happy hi, to Biscuit. see you. You know, you don't come and visit often enough. No, I know. I'll, I'll, I'll try and do come visit you a little bit more often. Do you know? Do you know if they met Burley at the Bugbear Burley? You know the guy. I don't think so. He's over by the the wagons usually. Burley. Yeah, I don't think so yet. You know, if if. The right person came along, they would just scoop early right up. Did you know with the swans, he talks like philosophy with them like all the time. So he's strong and he's smart. And yep, he sure is. He's a really special guy, that's what I think. Oh, so are you. Oh, thanks. That's really nice of you to say. <laughs> I really like Biscuit. Why is he talking philosophy with swans? Oh, you haven't met the swans yet. <laughs> You're going to have Are a lot here? of fun. You're going to have a lot of fun. I think they just got here. This was their first stop, maybe, and I'm looking at them oh, questioningly. Is that true? Yep. This was the first place you came to? Oh, after the ticket yeah. booth, yeah. Oh, man. Jeremy, did you tell Jeremy that? He's going to be so excited. <laughs> Excuse me. Didn't come up. Yeah, you I, should. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be their personal tour guide. Oh, that's a good idea, Rain, because, you know, that's there's sweet. there's parts that you probably shouldn't go to here in, in the Witchlight Carnival, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? So I'll be their personal tour guide to keep them safe. Biscuit, like what? Like I'm just, I look at them and I kind of wink. <laughs> and Biscuit's mm. like, well, you know, you'll figure it out. I mean, there's parts that, you know, could be a little scary. I like it. Is it? Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks, Biscuit. You're welcome. I like meeting new friends. New friends are really fun. Just so, get you to pew for this world. <laughs> so as the Ferris wheel ride um, kind of comes to an end, it slows down at the bottom and the, the fairy, or, sorry, Pixie at the, the end of the ride, uh, you know, opens the bucket and lets everybody out and uh, you're able to go and explore anything else that you would like to. Um, In the Pixie Kingdom? Yeah, anywhere. In the, well, or you can also leave the Pixie Kingdom. It's it, totally up to you guys. Snacks. <laughs> she makes uh, Cypress makes I, a beeline I would for the. I'm just waiting until treats. you're back to normal size before leaving here. Right, we don't want to get stepped on. Yeah, just for safety. Oh man, I want to go eat, and I want to eat so much until I'm so full. Because then when I get big again, it'll not even be like I'm that full. So I'll be able to keep <laughs> eating. Keep eating. Yeah. Later. Are there funnel cakes? There are okay. in the in the Pixie Kingdom specifically. There are cuca melon sandwiches, which are as delicious as right. they sound, and thimbleberry tarts. I would love a thimbleberry tart, and mostly because I like to compare other people's baking to my own wonderful baking. Okay, I want to try them both, and I'm gonna write reviews for everything I eat at this place. Oh, please do, please do, and we will publish them on our Facebook page because how can you not? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you guys uh, jump off the Ferris wheel and you go over to one of the wagons there that's actually kind of doubling as a, uh, a food wagon, if you will. And uh, you get up to the counter and, of course, a another pixie is inside and uh, looks at each of you and goes, All right, what can I get for you? One of everything for me. Lots of one cucumelon okay. sandwich and one thimbleberry tart. Coming right up. Yes, please. Thank I'd like a thimbleberry tart, please. Two thimbleberry tarts coming right up. Do you use uh, Do you use real butter in these? Real butter? What do you think we are, savages? Of course we use real butter. 
from grass-fed cows? Of course, only the finest free-range cows. <laughs> okay. Is it organic? Of course it's organic. There's no pesticides <laughs> in our wild? tarts. <laughs> <laughs> As the the Feywilds just spray in cans okay. all over there. Oh, right. <laughs> Round up. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'd like one of both, please. All right. So that's. Whoops. Wrong voice. All right. So that's two cucumber melon sandwiches, four thimbleberry tarts coming right out. And he steps away from the window and you have no idea what the heck he's doing in there but all of a sudden the wagon starts rocking back and forth you hear pots and pans start like clanging together there's you see you see you see stuff going flying past the window where you placed your order and then uh all of a sudden all of the noise stops and he comes and he sets down three beautiful plates one of them, it has uh, the sandwich and the thimbleberry tart on it. The sandwich is cut into quarters, triangle quarters, not squares. Um, and the thimbleberry tart looks like this beautiful puff pastry uh, that has like a Ooh. braid that goes down the middle of it. But it's also kind of open underneath the braid so you can see the color of the thimbleberry come through on the bottom of it. And it's topped with like a sugar powder. Um, and so that's... The color is the... the Berry. The, the berry. Um, I'm mm. imagining almost like a like a cranberry color nice. for this one. So it really kind of pops against that puff pastry. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so he sets that plate down. Uh, the next one was just the thimbleberry tart on a plate. And uh, it, there's a little bit more showmanship on this one because uh, there was no sandwich. So he's trying to fill up more of the plate so it looks a little bit more full. Um, underneath of the thimbleberry tart, there's a thimbleberry puree that he's laid down. And it has like this beautiful pattern that he's drawn. Um, he's both piped it onto the plate as well as like kind of run a fork through it. So you get all of these crazy... Uh, you know, almost like paisley like designs on the bottom of the plate. And uh, the thimbleberry tart is placed just off center to make a very artful statement, I suppose. And uh, most of the uh, icing sugar on this one is uh, kind of toward more towards the part of the tart that would be towards the center of the plate. So the very outside of the tart um, just is just the puff pastry. And then the inside of it has more of the, the sugar on that plate. And then the last one, it looks exactly like the first. It's the triangle cut into four triangles. Did I say triangle cut into four triangles? It's the sandwich cut into four triangles along with the uh, sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Along with the uh, thimbleberry tart. And he sets all three of them down on the counter and goes, well, enjoy. If you don't like it, I don't want to hear about it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> And he winks, and then the, the window closes. Okay. I take a bite of mine. Wow. Oh, this is really good. Not as good as mine, but this is really good. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you if this was real life and you ordered it, like, in a coffee shop and you took a bite of it, excuse my language, but it is fuck off good. Like, you take a bite and you just go fuck off. Fuck off. Wow. Yeah. Did yeah. you know cucumelon is a real thing? It is. Yeah. Really? What is it? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's, it's called a, it's also called a mouse melon. Mm -hmm. Cause it's a little melon. <gasps> yeah. Oh my God. I've yeah, seen them mouse. before. I've always wanted, they're so cute. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Well, now you've had one in make believe world. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I want mm -hmm. one in real life. We tried dragon fruit tonight in real life. Yeah. Not oh, a I lot of flavor, but they're pretty. It had no flavor. It yeah. No taste. Yeah. But they're pretty. But it's it so good right. in ice cream. It is. I'm going to try throwing, I froze it, and I'm going to try putting it in a smoothie next time I make one. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you have enjoyed. And where we can say that at this point, we're at like in half an hour has passed um, in the Pixie Kingdom. So you've done the Ferris wheel, you've uh, ride, you've given Pinecone all of the attention Pinecone needs, and uh, you have now filled your bellies. And suddenly... This gaggle of pixies comes flying down towards you. And uh, one of them who is, um, um, oh my gosh, um, 
Hang on. And there's a type of flower that I'm trying to think of that they're wearing as a hat. Hang on. Uh, it's not a pixie. It's not a paisley. It's not a petunia. It's uh, oh my gosh. Really? Pansy? A pansy? No, it's Ooh, not the... one of those. Um... It's one of those like cup ones. <sighs> Buttercup. How funny. Tulip. How funny. That I can't think of the flower. I can see it in my brain. Anyway. A daffodil would be a cute hat. You're it right. would be a cute hat. Let's just call it a daffodil. It's a daffodil. The hat actually is a little bit too big for this particular fairy. Uh, kind of slides down, you know, to cover her eyes every once in a while. And she kind of pushes it back up a little bit. Um, stubbornly refuses to take it off, even though it's too big. And uh, she comes down and she says, hi, my name is Honey Mint. Do you guys want to play a game? Yes. Yeah, we're at the carnival. We're going to play hide and seek. Okay. Who's it? The seeker, or it, is my friend Starbug. And she points, and Starbug is actually dressed up as both a star and a bug. It's a little oh. it's a little unnerving actually uh because you got pixie so you got cute. bug you got like a giant star costume but like the star costume also seems to like shine a little bit don't forget we're at twilight so you can see that the costume does in fact glow a little bit which is probably the unnerving part um let me see okay so the Hiding places that you can choose from. And this is simply my recommendation. Because I happen to be the champion hider. Um, but you can hide in Biscuit's wheel over there. Did you meet Biscuit yet? Yeah, Biscuit's yeah. good. Good peeps. Yeah, Biscuit is great. Uh, a little chatty. Kind of gossipy. Which I found a little weird. But we don't. I like that. We all have our things. Also, uh, there's like a little flower bed over there that you can hide in. And there, and then if you want to go like up a little bit higher, um, there's a heron nest that you can hide in up there. So um, I just wanted to give you all of the best hiding places so you guys can make really good choices and we can have a really fun game. We have to hide in those spots, or can we hide somewhere else? No, you can hide anywhere. I just wanted to point out that those were the really good spots. Well, now we all know. Okay. Well, you need nobody is looking for you. You're not looking for her, and she's not looking for you. You know what I mean? So it's okay that everybody knows. It just comes down to what Starbug is going to do. Hey. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, Alright. So who wants to hide in which area? I want to hide in the flower. Okay. I want to hide with Biscuit. Okay. I'll use the, the hair nest. Okay. And... Rain, are you going to hide? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that exasperated sigh, and I'm not really sure what to do with it. I will hide, but not in any of those spots. <laughs> okay. Okay. No problem. All right. Rain hides elsewhere. It's elsewhere, okay. Are you going to hide in plain sight? Okay, got it. All right. So uh, to play this out, um, we're going to do some dice rolls. Uh, I would like everyone to give me a stealth check, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I was expecting this, but uh, I'm pretty sure... Where is it? There it is. Does that mean expertise? Oops, hold on. 
What happened here? I, if that's me, I didn't mean to do that. This badge because okay. of the armor I'm wearing. So. Uh, right. Yep. <laughs> okay. Oops. What happened there? What did I do? Don't know. What have you done? Okay. There we go. Don't worry about it. I'm good. I All right. You. And rain. Oh. One's there, one's there, one's in the tree. What if there was like a hair nest? How tall am I as in this as this tiny creature? Uh, well, I mean, you're tiny. I don't need to know exactly you where small. you decided to hide. I just need the roll. Okay, so what am I rolling? Uh, stealth. Stealth. Oh dear. Oh, we finally have the pop out feature again on our character sheets. Ew. Yeah, it's awesome. I missed that. We had it before, and then it wasn't there anymore. Yeah, I messed with the modules and stuff for the game when I was importing everything, so. But... How do I roll it? It's not doing anything. Is there a pop-up that says uh, advantage, disadvantage, normal? No. Do you want me to try to roll it for you? Because I'm rolling on it in my character sheet. Uh, minimize the sheet. Maybe the pop up appeared behind it. Oh, yeah, maybe. No, because it's not showing a roll in my in the thing. No, but it's asked, it's going to ask you whether you want to roll it with a uh, disadvantage or not. Oh. So it's a little message box that shows up after yeah. you click it. It might, it might hide behind your character sheet. So close your character sheet and see Let's if the box is this. there. Yeah, I did. Okay. Skill check 1d20 plus 2. Mm -hmm. That's all that comes up. That's so weird. So, okay, do you want me to do it for you? Yeah, because it's not working. Okay. You got the 12. All right, I need apple and cypress uh, to each roll again, please. Where, where, sorry, what were we rolling on here? Stealth. Still. No, stealth. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, I'm stealthy. <laughs> All right. I am hot. You are not. And you get found. Yeah, I don't like I probably don't even make oh, it up no. the tree. <laughs> Just standing us behind it. All right. So Starbug kind of comes around a corner and goes, Ha ha, gotcha. Hello. Yes, you did. And tags you. And I'm like, come on, I'll get you some wine. Some thimbleberry wine. It'll be great. Ooh. Yes, please. Okay. Do I follow you or do I go drink? No, come with me. So okay. um, this round of the uh, hide and seek game is now over. Uh, so we're going to do stealth rolls again. And the only okay, one not involved in this one is Cypress. <laughs> Eliminated. Yeah, you are eliminated from the game. All right. Ability check. Liam got a 19. Apple Mooncake got a 10. And Rain. Yes, yeah, not let me do anything. Okay. I'll try to figure out what's going on with that for you. Actually, just roll a d20 and um, add two to it down in the little dice roller. A 16 plus 2, so 18. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, oh, by the way, each round, uh, you guys switch hiding places. <clears throat> so everybody is always kind of running around and, and finding a new spot to hide. Uh, but uh, this time, Apple, you are the one who is found. So you are now ah! out of the game. Yep. So uh, okay. uh, Starbug uh, comes over and goes, Do you want to go have some wine, too? Sorry, I know the voice changed. Sure. I couldn't keep it up. 
Sure, I'll have some wine. Okay. Hi, Apple. Hi. <laughs> All right. Dad, I, I lost. It's contagious. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I know. I'm so sorry. Hi. All right. Um. All right. So Rain and Liam, I need you two to roll again. Uno mas. Uno mas. Uno mas. This is for the winner. 19. And a, we're going to plus add two to that. 18, 19. So 20, what, 20, a 19 and a 20. Uh, so it takes a lot longer for Starbug to find either of you. Uh, but uh, they do find Leem first. So Rain, you are the winner of this game. You are declared the winner and you receive a pocket of pixie dust. Yay. Clap, clap, clap. <laughs> Can I get it in a bag? Yay. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it is it is in a, like, <laughs> kind of like a baggie, but it's a pocket's worth. When you're tiny, okay. it's a pocket's worth. Tiny pocket's worth. Yep. Which would be like a thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Unless it grows with me when I go back to my normal size. Yeah, we'll see. Starbuck, what's it used for? Oh, all manner of things. Whoops, wrong voice. She changed again. Oh, manner of things. <laughs> you never oh, know okay. when a little bit of pixie dust will come in handy. Plus, it can help make you real small. And with that, the hour just about comes to a close. And... Give me a second, because there's an event that we need to have happen. Oh, oh, no, an event. So excited. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Don't want that. Nope, don't need that. Nope, don't need that. Okay, fine. We'll do this. We'll go in this direction instead. So as you guys are leaving the Pixie Kingdom, because at this point, uh, your smallification is just about to come to an end. Um, you walk out of uh, this little archway here that was the entrance to the Pixie Kingdom. And when you come out of it, you see two little girls somewhere in the ballpark of eight to ten years old and one of them is carrying this cheerful yellow balloon it has like a sun face kind of painted onto it and she's holding hands with another girl but the other girl doesn't quite look totally right i guess is the way to put it um everybody give me a perception check on this little girl I have a minus one, Oof. but I rolled a 20. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> yeah, 19, yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. Cool. <laughs> and I have, what was it per? Perception. Perception? I have a plus one. Okay, so a 16. All right. So um, Apple and Cypress, you two um, just kind of noticed that um, the little girl without the balloon um, just looks unkempt. Like it looks like her hair is a little bit greasy. Her dress maybe has like a stain or a little tear in it or something like that. And it looks like it's been a really long time since she has seen the sun. She looks very, very, very pale. For Rain and Leem... Uh, as the two of them are kind of skipping along, she looks over her shoulder. And when she looks over her shoulder, you see that she's wearing a pig mask. It covers half of her face. And she grins at you. And when she grins, she reveals a smile that's a little bit too big. 
and her mouth is full of these jagged, sharp, pointed teeth. And she kind of winks. Ah. Yeah. And she winks at you. And the smile kind of goes back to like what a normal smile would look like. And um, the two girls continue to skip off through the carnival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creepy, cursed child. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's totally fine. <laughs> not going to push that out of my yep. nothing mind to, at all. Nothing to see here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, all good. Whoa. Creepy kids, just creepy kids that got dropped off at the carnival. It's yeah. totally fine. Everybody just nice. waves at them. It. Bye, kids. <laughs> okay, yes. Right. yes, exactly. Bye. Yeah. Have, have fun at the carnival. <laughs> all right. Where would you like to go to next? Cypress wanders over to the outstare the Cyclops. Outstare the Cyclops. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh man. Let me find it. Here it is. Whew. Oh. I'm excited. All right. Can we take a five minute? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Let's do that. And when we come back, we will get into a staring contest with, with, <laughs> with the Cyclops. All right. Uh, yeah. Be, yeah.
Oh, okay. Oh, okay, good. Aaron is back. Christine is back. Do we have Janet? Do we have Cynthia? We don't yet. Okay, no problem. I can fill the time with um, a couple of things uh, that uh, we need to make sure uh, gets mentioned. So uh, Wizards and Wine, uh, we are happily under the umbrella of the pop culture cosmos. Um, we have a whole bunch of different shows that you can check out, uh, including Demolition Force, which you can hear on Monday. And Christine, are you part of Mitch's new campaign? Or was that? Uh, that's the other, the, the, the Sunday other group. group that... Okay finished and restarted gotcha okay no problem so uh mitch is still doing his thing on the weekends uh he's such a good dm i'm quite frankly pretty jealous um and i'm upset that i don't get to play in his games anymore because of the time is timing and how all that works out but they get crazy yeah he's so good um and then of course you've got wizards and wine uh with us we also have wizards and wine part two um, which is a new group of players that we've put together and, uh, they're all, uh, local to Las Vegas, which is where I am. And it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge because I've got the, these two groups. They're both at the carnival. There's going to be crossovers between the two groups. Once everybody kind of finds their feet in the witch like carnival, um, and, actions and decisions of one group will impact the actions and decisions of the other be it you know one of these little games maybe um if christine beats the cyclops the dc for the next person should they decide to try to have a staring contest with the cyclops uh the dc will be a little bit higher you know the, all of that kind of stuff is uh, sort of what i'm looking at for that so um that's what you can expect here uh, with Wizards and Wine and the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. By the way, uh, the episodes are going to drop in podcast form, so they're going to be like cleaned up, and uh, we're going to add music and all of that kind of stuff to it. Uh, and the episodes will drop on Mondays. So, just an FYI for everyone there. Uh, so it's today. Today's Monday, right? Yeah, today's Monday. So our session zero episode dropped this morning. And now we're playing our session one, which will drop in two weeks. Does that make sense? Sort of. We're going to pretend that it Perfect. does. Perfect. Yeah. Let's pretend that it does. Easy magic. Okay. So while you guys uh, were on break, um, I had to, there's a timed event uh, that uh, was happening and we're going to do the timed event before we do the Cyclops staring contest. Um, this is the first hour that the witch like carnival has been opened for the day and there's a lot of like spectacle happening at this carnival and as you guys come out of the pixie kingdom and you all come back up to your you know your regular size i don't want to say big size because not all of you are big um you see a 12 foot tall walking tree approaching you uh, the talking tree has garland and golden ribbons and it's marching down the through fair there's emerald clouds that are swirling above the tree uh, and rain down golden spinning sycamore seeds you can try to catch the seeds before they hit the ground and uh, as the seeds fall gently a chatty squirrel scampers along the boughs of the tree, handing out dandelions to select passerbys. So as you guys uh, kind of make room for this giant walking tree to walk by, uh, you can make a check to see if you can catch one of these sycamore trees. Just give me a dexterity check. Dexterity check. Yep, definitely. Definitely. Uh, Dex ability check when I click on it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that worked for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Apple, uh, you try real hard. I sure do. Yeah. Uh, I sure do. But you come up um, without a sycamore seed. However, um, you do manage to... Uh, be a receiver of uh, one of the dandelions and uh, the dandelion when it's handed to you quickly goes to seed and you can make a wish on it not like a huge wish but something that uh, your character kind of secretly longs for write it down on a piece of paper and um, well actually write it down on um, a private message either on Facebook or Discord or email or whatever however send me that information okay 
Who, is that me too or no? Just you. You're the only oh, one that, yeah, you're the only one that didn't catch a seed. So instead you got the dandelion, which immediately turned to the dandelion seeds, you know, when they turn into the white puffy things. Yeah. And you're able to, to make a wish. So whatever your wish is for apple mooncake or something that apple mooncake is wishing for, okay. send it to me in a private message or email or whatever. Okay. okay. Uh, now for the rest of you, um, Cypress. You yep. catch a seed, and when it lands in the palm of your hand, it turns into a gold coin. Ooh. And uh, Lean, uh, you see this happen, so you like pop your hand out, and you're like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And one lands in the palm of your hand, and it also turns into a gold coin. Ooh. And Buck. Yeah. And Rain, <laughs> for you, uh, when you catch your seed, uh, in your hand, you feel um, almost like your luck is about to change. And what the what the seed gives you is uh, you're going to have a D8 uh, that you'll be able to add to an ability check, but you have to use it before dawn or it just goes away. So you basically have like a free D8 to add to whatever. Or like inspiration. Yeah, sort of. Seed inspiration? No. Seed inspiration. Ah! And that's why I can't believe you don't DM yet. <laughs> Sorry, I just want confirmation that Cynthia got the information. Cynthia? Cynthia? You got notes for it. Yeah, I got it. I was on. Mute, oh, okay. I was eating a coffee crisp, I didn't want to crunch in the microphone. Uh, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. All right. So as you guys come out of that and you see this big tree walk by, um, you suddenly hear, What do you do when the eye of a cyclops falls on you? You stare right back. If you have the stamina, come and stare down our cyclops of the Witchlight Carnival. And it's just yes. at this, yeah, it's just at this booth that's like right beside uh, where you guys came out of the uh, fairy yeah. kingdom. Or sorry, pixie kingdom. Yeah. Cypress is super interested and just walks right up. Fantastic. Okay, so Hello. You, you walk up and the cyclops kind of bends forward and goes, Hello, little one. Do you think you got what it takes to outstare me? I hope so. I don't. Ha, ha, ha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Come web. Wow. That's so funny. Okay. Go come web. Yeah. Um, all I need you to do is give me a constitution check. Con check. Oh. Oof. <laughs> oh. So close. So close. You're like staring at this Cyclops like right in his one eye. You're like, you're staring like dead in the center of it. You got those uh, minotaur pupils. Yeah. And he like, his eye almost like twitches a little bit. Like it just kind of does this very subtle little like blink of a movement. And it mm -hmm. breaks your concentration and you blink first. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, I lost. Anyone else want to take on our Cyclops in a staring contest? Are free to do this? Yes. Yeah, I'll try them. Love to. Oh, everybody's <laughs> going to? Okay, no problem. All right. Yeah, uh, why not? Sure, yeah. I'll take no, them it's on. free. All right. I love it. Lean. Yeah, come on. Lean. Go first. Lean. All right. Yeah. All right. Was it con check? Con check. New. Oops. <laughs> yeah. You don't even get like 10 seconds in and you blink. And the Cyclops goes. That was goes, fun. Thanks, Cyclops. <laughs> okay. Go, Apple. Yeah, Apple. Can I try? Yes, please do. All right, contract. Oof. No winners here. Oh, wait, Rain is going to go to you, right? Okay. So this is just a straight up ability check, right? Yes.
Dang, nobody beat the Cyclops. Woof. Rain takes Things like rigged. collapses in a fit of giggles. She <laughs> knew she couldn't do it. Right, yeah. And the Cyclops goes, See you later, Rain. See you, Cy. One of these days you'll beat me. <laughs> but not today. No, you're a natural at that. I kind of am. It's what we do. He's popping off. <laughs> All right. Where would you like to head next? Well, it's right next to it. Let me zoom in here. That's ring a toss. ring toss. Yeah. There's a ring toss with some bunnies? It is. Yes. Hey, <laughs> Apple. I mean, uh, Toad. Look at these bunnies. Yeah, girl. <laughs> yeah, it's because you're a bunny, right? <laughs> yeah, I feel a little bit um, uncomfortable with this. Um, but we'll do that. They have horns. They have horns. They do have horns. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to find. That's out stare the Cyclops. I'm trying to find where I put that one. That's are they the live thing. rabbits or are they? Um, things? I will tell you as soon as I find it. I'm getting closer. That's the snail racing. Okay. They're bunny corns. <laughs> So cute. Okay. What's the other one? Jackalope? Jackalope oh. Unibits. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, I'm snorting again. Yeah, it's <laughs> happening. Uh, I'm just gonna drink my tea. <laughs> Take a booze. No. There we go. All right. So we are currently standing in front of the Al Mirage Ring Toss. Let me show to chat. This is what it looks like. Oh, it's a baby. It's a wooden baby. I it see. is. They're wooden. Yeah. Um, but okay. So the the Barker in front of this stall is going. Uh, this El Mirage is no mirage. Adorn its horn with two or three wings. Wings. Rings. To win a prize. So your goal here is to uh, toss a ring onto the, uh, obviously, the horn of the rabbit. Um, <clears throat> however, they do teleport around the board as you're tossing them. So for this one, we ah. need... There's always got to be seems something. Unfair. There's always <laughs> got to be something. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Teleports around the tabletop, making it hard to score a success. You get to toss three rings. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to give me three dexterity checks in a row. So Liam, go mm -hmm. first. Three dex checks. All right, here we go. Dex check. Dex check. Dex check. What did I get? 11, 20, and 17. You got two. Hey, two successful tosses gets you nice. a ring, a roll on the carnival prize. Where is my table? Man, I hope I win. Uh, I don't know. I can't even think. I haven't really been to a lot of carnivals in my life. Can we win the rabbit? You don't win the rabbit. <sighs> you don't win the rabbit. I want to talk to the guy who runs this place. <laughs> I want to win a rabbit when I win the rabbit ring toss. How do you react to that, Rain? Wanting to meet the manager of the carnival. It should be a little bit upsetting. Yeah. I'm like, no, you don't want to do that. Carnival prizes. Okay. I don't know. It depends on what I win. <laughs> They're a little... All right. They can be a little aloof. You win a... Does it tell you? A bottle, bottle of, of Witch wine? Light Wine, 
While the bottle is uncorked, it plays calliope music until the body bottle is empty of wine. Okay. Bottle of witch light wine. Yeah. Okay, so it's not uncorked. It is while it's uncorked. It That's plays right. Calliope. Okay. Yeah, right now it's just a bottle of wine. Okay. Yep. Okay. And it has like the same image on the bottle as that is on your ticket that you were handed when you came in. <clears throat> all right. Uh, all right. Who's next? I won. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Who's next? I can go. Okay. Three of those checks in a row, please. Dex checks. Right. <clears throat> One. Two. Three. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, you get a roll on the table, too, because you got two. Let's see what we end up with. A glove puppet in the shape of a wizard. As an <laughs> action, you can move the puppet's arms to cast the minor illusion cantrip. After three uses, the puppet disappears in a puff of smoke. So it becomes a puppet. Yeah. <laughs> all right who else wanted to try this one i would like to please do to shuffle forward yep do we keep these prizes like yeah. i add this to my thing yes absolutely put it in your inventory Oof. <laughs> Sorry, Cypress. <laughs> no prize for you. Oh. 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 All right. Rain, do you want to roll as well? Yeah, I'll try. Okay. I mean, you don't often get to, like, enjoy the carnival this way. No, I don't. Yeah. So it's dex check? Yep. We just need three of them in a row. This is like your three rings that you're tossing. There's no glove puppet in inventory, so I guess I'll add it. Yeah. Nice. You managed to get all three to land. Um, so let me just do a little roll here on the table. And you get a packet of pixie dust. What happened to the other one I got? Still in your pocket. Yeah. Is it miniature? Now. Yeah, it's still small. Still small. God. I I give that one to the to the uh, to the hair and gun. They're tiny. Small. Shall I give both of yeah. them to the hair and gun? Thank you. And here. Um, okay. I'm gonna add my glove. Glove puppy. I put glove puppy. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Oh. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Um. I need to do another thing. All right, so as you guys are um, doing your your thing and, you know, you're kind of giving, giving Cyprus the what for for not being able to outstare the the, Cyper for, uh, the Cyprus, the Cyclops, not being able to uh, land rings on uh, the, oh, God, I already forget what they're called, the little bunny with a horn. Um, and as that's happening, you kind of uh, hear a bunch of really excited kids behind you. And as you turn around, you see an elf stilt walker uh, tossing uh, little, like, candies out to children who walk by. I want a candy. candy. <laughs> I want candy. Me too. Well, you can try to catch some, for sure. Give me a dex check. Give me a dex check. 
Please do. I do not like, let me just tell you right now, I do not like stunt walkers. <laughs> like in real life. Yeah, and it shows. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry, starts again, but fails. Fails, yeah. This is going really well for your yeah. whole, like, kind of clumsy thing that you were going for. I like yeah. it. And Dexterity check? Yes. I know, trying to catch them. A 14. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Apple, you also, uh, you know, go to catch some, but sure enough, you, you're just about there and it just kind of falls through your fingers. Um, however, Leem... I'm not really invested. Yeah. Leem and Rain, uh, you're both easily able to uh, catch a couple of pieces of candy. Oh, I will hand out candy. Yeah. To the gang. Cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's just regular, like, sugary, delicious, super tasty candy. There's nothing really too crazy that's going on candy. with that one. Yeah. It's just straight up candy. I, I hand mine to Cypress. There you go. Thank you. You're, smack You're welcome. Some this I hope like you guys don't mind me tagging along. I don't get not at all. To, I, don't, I don't get much of a chance to actually enjoy myself here since I work the carnival. So, how do they hire? <laughs> I, well, I kind of ran away when I was thirteen, hid in their thing, and left with them. So it wasn't a matter of them hiring me; it was just they got stuck with me. You were a stowaway. Oh, was I ever? <laughs> Best decision I ever made. What's the work like? Eh, it's, you know, it's all in your attitude. You gotta be able to enjoy being around people and enjoy the weird. She just kind of scratches her chin. It's like, I think I could do that. I'm pretty sure anyone, all of you could do that. I mean, they've befriended a hamster. Well, right? <laughs> <clears throat> All right. What do you want to do next, guys? There's so much. And we have 30 minutes left. Hmm. Snail I mean, racing. All right. Mew. Snail racing. Okay. Amazing. I mean, it's right here. And look at it. <laughs> All right. Snail racing. That was kind of thanks to herself. Wasn't there something we're supposed to be doing here? It's kind of like mumbles out loud. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Okay. So, uh, as you guys um, are, you know, still over here kind of playing your games, uh, you start to hear, like, really loud, boisterous cheering. And uh, you look over towards where the noise is coming from, and you see that it is coming from the snail racing arena. Uh, the grandstand next to the race course is filled with cheering fairgovers. Uh, they are ringing bells. They're blowing on the, I can never pronounce it right, Vizuzulos, those plastic horn things that are awful. Vuvuzela? Yeah, that's the one. Um, they are swinging rattles. They're waving flags in various colors. And on the starting line, as you guys walk in, um, by the way, it is a ticket punch for this one. So you can mark that one off. Um you do see uh, eight giant snails, and they are all having their shells scrubbed by pixies. And above the circular course, a wooden gentry hangs from the branches of the central tree where two goblins officiate the proceedings. Basically, they're like your race callers, you know? Um, I would like, let me see, what do I need? rounds because that's all hysterical boom, 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 boom. okay um anyone who wants to participate in the snail racing actually get on a snail and race i need you to roll me a d8 
this is by no means a prerequisite for anything else as well. This is just simply if oh, you so want <laughs> to take part. Yeah. All right, so Liam, you had the three. Um, Cypress, I'm going to need you to roll um, again for me. Apple got a seven. Did, did, did I roll two? I think the, no. the red no. came She's out again as me. Yeah. Oh, okay, the color is... Um, Apple, if you right-click on your name in the players list, you should be able to sign um, Apple as yourself. You um, Like, down at the left side? Yep. User configuration? Oh! Um, yeah, it should look weird. Yeah, I, then, it's I, setting up a new game. I'm sure there's other stuff that I forgot to do in here as well. Yeah. All right. Let's see if it works this time. Nope. Nope. Weird. Nope. I'll I'll try to figure mm -hmm. it out. I may end up having to delete these profiles and then re-adding you guys to it. Um, but uh, I mean, I we got two weeks to figure it out, so I'm not super worried about it. Okay, so number three, first up is Leem. You will be riding the um, snail in purple called High Road. Nice, cool name. Right? Uh, number seven, who got the first seven? It was... Okay, so we have Leem. Apple, a seven. Apple, you will be Apple. riding the snail in red called Breakneck. Breakneck? <laughs> what a fitting name. Right? Called Breakneck. I'm envisioning Fast and Furious oh, as snails. A hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Dom Toretto. Yeah. Uh, okay, for Rain, you will be... On the snail in green called Quick Leaf. All right. And uh, Cypress rolling an eight. You are. You are on the snail in black, and that snail is called Queen's Majesty. Wow. Fancy. All right. And you know what? I'm just going to have the four of you do the race. I'm not going to put NPCs into it. I think that's that's fine. Okay. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Fireworks course is... Oh, I've got to keep track of this, too. So bear with me, because I'm going to have to do a little bit of math. The track is 480 feet long. Uh, good to know there. Are we three tickets in now? Uh, two. Two, yep. Oh, really? Yep. Pixie Kingdom and Snail Racing. We have six left, right? Yep. Yep. <sighs> this is so friggin' funny. I hope I, I hope I play this right, and I hope it comes across as funny as it is in my brain. Okay. Uh so um, as you guys, uh, you know, you, you walk in and, you know, anybody who wants to participate, we need some help. Some of our jockeys fell ill, so we need people to step in. Not unlike what we experienced in Portney and Zaru in the Tomb of Annihilation. Do you remember <laughs> that kind of situation? Uh, except that was like race team yeah. sabotaging race team, really, was what that one was. But this is just... Uh, they happen to have uh, four snails available. You guys walk in, you're four players, you kind of draw popsicle sticks, you get assigned your snail, and uh, you get ushered down to the starting line. As you climb up on top of your snail, you are given a few very short directions. One, the race starts as soon as you see fireworks. Two, the racetrack is 480 feet long. The first person to make it around is obviously the winner. Up for grabs is a uh, potion of advantage should you win this race. 
Yum, those are delicious. Very tasty. Very, very tasty. Okay. Sounds useful. All right, so you guys, you, you climb up. Everybody gets comfortable. Cypress um, bows before she <laughs> climbs on her <laughs> Yeah, right? Like a little curtsy. Boop. I love it. No, like the nightly, you know. Uh, oh, yes. Like Brienne like of Tarth. A, a, yeah, like a soldier type yeah. of bow. Perfect. All right. Uh, the, the snail, oddly enough, kind of bows back, dips its head willing to accept you as a rider um so you all climb onto your snails the fireworks go off and all of a sudden your snails take off at a ridiculously fast speed like nobody (laughs) is prepared for this i need you all to give me a animal handling check please Uh uh-oh yeah no way I don't have very good, even though I'm an animal ish. We have a six, we have a ten, we have a okay. three. So with me. My character sheet is let, let me roll the, like the dex checks and stuff, but it's still not letting me do these things. Okay. So animal handling, I get a plus one. Okay. So yeah, just roll a d20 plus and one. plus one. Yep. Yeah. Maybe change your sheet. I did. It was a weird sheet when I came into it, and I didn't. This is the only sheet I'd like. Weird, because oh. I know where everything is. Yeah, I'll I'll try to look into it for you when we're done here today. And a nine. Okay. So. Plus one. Right. So a ten. Okay. So you all make it seventy feet around the racetrack in the first round. All right. So and 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 you guys are like staying neck and neck with each other. Nobody is a clear winner yet. Another animal handling check. Mom, break the neck. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Cypress. <laughs> I know, right? Nineteen. Oh. Perfect. Cause she and... cause she bowed to it first. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. No, okay. No, I get flashbacks to my ride with a uh, pine cone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's what happens. Um, for everybody who um, failed, which was everybody but Cypress, um, your snails move another 70 feet in this round. However, Cypress, because you succeeded and you succeeded by so much, you move ahead 20 feet so you are now uh, 20 feet ahead of everybody else they're at 140 so you're at 160 feet around the track so far so you are in the lead and everybody else is at 140 I don't know the best way to keep track of this for myself but everyone 160 Cyprus alright this is the third round Give me those animal handling checks. <clears throat> yeah, it's the character sheet. Dang it. Mm. Oof. Is that everybody? One, two, three, four. Yes. Yep. Yep. All right. Please. So black one is messing me up. <laughs> <Sorry>. I'm just, <laughs> just clicking it in my character sheet. Yeah, it's the so kind I of character. <laughs> yeah, it's just the style of character sheet that you have that's doing that. Okay. All right. Oh. So now we have um, Apple and Rain. You guys both move ahead another 70. So we're at 7, 10, 11, another one, here, another one. So you now are at 210 feet. However, at 140 plus uh, 10. So you move ahead 90 feet. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So you're at 230 feet, Liam. And Cyprus, you were at 160, and you get 90 feet as well. Five, so you're at 250 feet. So uh, Cyprus now in the front with Liam coming up behind with 230. 
And then we still have cypress and rain at 210. Sorry, not cypress and rain, um, apple and rain. Cypress, lean, apple, rain. All right, fourth round. Give me those animal handling checks again. <laughs> a nine, okay. Oh, nine, six. Oh, so close to the 20. Eight, and I'm seven. I'm gonna be going backwards soon. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do, you do continue forward. to move forward. Be okay. Of course. So 70, so 280 for both apple and rain now. You guys are at 280 feet. Um, Liam, you are at 300 feet and 250 and 70. Bear with me. I'm terrible at math. 0, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 11, 12, 12, 12, 320. Set that one aside. So we have Cypress in the front at 320. 300 is Lean. And then at 280, we have Apple Rain. Perfect. OK. Uh, fifth round. Uh, you guys are starting to hear uh, the, the crowd going absolutely wild. They're having the time of their lives with this. Um, Give me another animal handling check. Oh, no. Oof. <laughs> Cross some fingers here. No, your majesty. <laughs> Finally. Oh, go rain. <laughs> and I'm going to roll one of these because a the thing. Number three. Oh, okay. Nothing happens. Lucky you. Um, rain. <laughs> okay. So rain 17. So that's going to be 20 feet. Uh, so rain, you're now up to 300 feet. Oh, no, wait, that's not right. It's. Uh, so no, it's going to be 103. And then we have Cypress, who failed, but is at 400. Leem failed and is at 380. And then Apple, bless your little heart. Uh, 280 plus 80 gives me 360, I believe. We'll pretend that that's correct. Uh, so now we have Cypress in the lead. Second, we have Rain coming out of nowhere. The crowd's going absolutely wild. Uh, the two uh, guys that were up in the tree, the goblins who are officiating the race, are just losing their minds. Very, very exciting. Uh, Liam, you are in third. And Apple, you are currently in fourth position. And that Fourth position? Uh, fourth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is the fifth round, and I'm going to roll this dice again. And I'm going to get that, which means nothing happens. Okay, uh, everybody, give me your animal handling checks. God, I'm not rolling well. like the dice don't like us today oh my god me either <laughs> yikes it is all right um you've gotten quite a few nat 20s though i got a couple yet front loaded it okay so uh that means that okay let me start with who was in first who's in first cyprus and you met so 480 feet and then we have um, 390. Did you pass, Cynthia? Sorry. Uh, yes, you did. Okay. So yeah. you have 390 plus 80 
you're going to come in second. So Cypress, you're coming in first. And then we have Rain. And then we have Leem. And then we have Apple. That's the race. So uh, Cypress, your um, snail is kind of taken away. You're going to go to like Victory Row. Um, so you're kind of taken away from, uh, the rest of your, your, uh, party for a second. And in the, you know, in victory row, it's all the usual stuff. You, you know, you get the big flower wreath that goes around the snail and everybody is all excited about that. You get handed, uh, your potion of advantage and you also get uh, a little tiny itty bitty miniature, um, like little trophy, like the little trophy cups. You know what I mean? You get one of those oh, yeah. guys. Now, for Miss Apple, yes, you are going to receive a consolation prize. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, you can add this to your uh, sheet. I, it's probably going to end up being a custom thing. Um, we'll figure out how to make it work uh, with these little um, extra bits that you guys get. Um, but you get a magic wand that allows you to cast the Dancing Lights cantrip once. Once the spell has been cast, the wand turns into a tulip. I like it. Okay. So uh, some of the random things, because I just, because this snail race had the potential to be hysterical, but I wasn't, my rolls didn't come through right on the D8s. But um, there could have been a, a random snail could have gotten like a, a stitch in his side and it would have reduced his speed by 40 for that round. Um, <laughs> a spectator could have thrown a head of lettuce at a random snail, and that snail would have stopped to eat the lettuce <laughs> and wouldn't moved at all that round. Um, <laughs> one random snail could have been bolstered by the crowd and moved an extra 20 feet for the round. And the last one was the saddle on a random snail comes loose and falls off. The snail's jockey... Uh, would have had to have succeeded on a deck saving throw to remain on the snail. On a fail, the jockey falls off and the snail continues on its own. <laughs> so cute. Right? I love it. All right. So snail racing is down. And I think, guys, that's probably where we should pause it for. I mean, we get, we get a lot in there. You guys got some good gossip. <laughs> you, guys have won, great. you guys have won some pretty fun stuff, prizes. Um, and stuff like that. You've done some racing. I'm into it. So I'm just going to make a note of all of the things that you guys have done so I don't get it confused with the other group. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to call it this week for Wizards and Wine in the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Are you guys having fun with it so far? I love it. Yes. Yeah, it's a treat. Good. I'm glad. It's just... I want to go there. Like, really want to go there in real life. <laughs> I know. But can you imagine how terrifying a giant snail would be? Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking that. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. Wouldn't yeah. that be scary? A creepy child. Yeah, yeah or the creepy child. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, or that's... being turned into a pixie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, a lot of things would have been scary. Um, oh, also, uh, I don't think that I, I don't remember if I mentioned it or not, but when you guys walked into the Witchlight Carnival, uh, you were each also handed uh, a set of butterfly wings, like, you know, little costume oh, right. wings. And uh, you guys are all wearing those as well while you're inside the Witchlight Carnival. It's kind of a visual cue for them to know whether or not you have paid your way in. I love it. Yeah. So that is the Witchlight Carnival thus far. Guys, thank you so much. It really has been a lot of fun to, to run this one for you. I'm excited to see uh, how the rest of the Witchlight Carnival goes and then as we continue to get into the story because it's so damn cool. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> Thank you guys. And uh, we will be back not next week with this group. We'll be back next week, but it's the first full game uh, for the other group next week. And I will see you guys again on July 4th. Does anybody have any plans for the long weekend? Nope. No. Um, not that I'm aware I of yet. don't know what if we have anything yet. Okay. Keep me posted on that. Will do. do. All right. Um, but uh, potentially, uh, we're eyeing the fourth for our next game with this group of girls uh, for the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for bearing with us as we get our feet under us for uh, for this campaign. 
Um, we hope that you're having as much fun listening to it as we're having fun playing it. And uh, don't forget to always drink responsibly with Wizards and Wine. And don't forget to always carry that D20 because you never know when you're going to need some initiative. Mm -hmm. And...